What's up guys, in this video, I wanna go over four must know fraction operations that I feel like students need to have mastered. When they look at it, they know exactly what to do. They're not confused. It's not trying to remember some kind of formula or trick or song. It's like, nope, I know what to do. I am comfortable with this. Because when students get to more advanced problems, I see these fraction operations pop up all the time and students get completely lost. And that impedes them from actually understanding the current stuff that they're working on or not being able to finish their test or your quiz. So that's why I wanna go over these videos, or that's why I wanna go over these examples. So let's start off with the first one. So first one is going to be two thirds plus one. It seems pretty simple, but ladies and gentlemen, I cannot tell you how many times students will be like, I don't know what to do. I totally forgot what to do with fractions. So I think it's really important to remember when we have a fraction plus a integer, remember we can always rewrite our integer as a fraction by just putting it over one. Now we need to add these two fractions together, but we have to get a common denominator. So what we need to do is we need to think about a number that we can multiply by one to be able to get this same denominator over here as three. And in this case, you can see hopefully that it's pretty simple. It's just gonna be a three over three. So now I can rewrite the problem as a two thirds plus a three over three. The other thing that I usually technically do, this is a little bit more elementary, but I also want you to understand, wouldn't you agree that one is equal to a three over three or it's equal to a six over a six, right? So whenever you're trying to add or even subtract with a one, just rewrite it with your same denominator over the same numerator, right? Three over three, six over six, 20 over 20. Doesn't really matter, right? But you need to make sure you match your denominators if you're going to apply addition or subtraction. So now when we're adding our fractions, just recall, you can actually do, you only apply the operation to your numerator. So this is going to be a five and then you keep your denominator over the same. I actually made a YouTube video where I actually added the denominators one time and then the video's still up there, but I'll leave it to you guys to see if you guys can find it. It was pretty embarrassing, but <laughs> whatever, it is what it is. All right, let's get to the next one. So three minus a one fourth. So usually students get the one because they like rewriting things as three over three, six over six, right? But then they get to a problem like this and then again, they totally forget. But remember, all integers can be rewritten as fractions. Now in this case, to get to your common denominator of four, we're gonna do the exact same thing we did over here. We just don't have a one in the numerator. So in this case, I'm gonna multiply by four over four. Four times three is going to be a 12 minus one, and you can rewrite that over your common denominator of four, right? Or you could do 12 over four minus one over four. In this case now, you can simplify 12 minus one is going to be 11 over four. So that is some very basic ones with addition and subtraction. Now let's get into some division. All right. So the first one is three divided by seven eighths. Now, again, what I always like to do is I don't want to deal with my integers. I'm going to rewrite this as a fraction. And just remember when you are dividing a fraction, that is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So what we can simply do is just rewrite this as a multiplication problem and reciprocate your divisor. It's very important. A lot of times students will reciprocate the first fraction or they will reciprocate both of them. No, we're only reciprocating the second fraction. Now to multiply, I can multiply just straight across. So therefore that'd be a 24 over seven. And then the last one is also very related to with division. Now you can see there's a kind of a common theme here, right? We're dealing with integers and we're dealing with fractions because that's again where a lot of the big mistakes happen, even though students might have already passed their fractions test and they have like a good understanding of them. But these types of problems come up over and over again and students just get confused. So I really wanna make sure that's why we're diving deep in with it. So again, seven fourths divided by five, again, rewrite that as a fraction. Now rewrite as multiplication by taking the reciprocal of your divisor. So therefore it's gonna be a seven fourths times a one fifth. Now I can multiply straight across and I get a seven over 20. But hopefully you guys can see that if you understand this stuff, I worked everything out and explained it. But the point where I want you to get to is where you can do it in your head. 